Before going into more detail on the maximum likelihood and Bayesian estimation strategies for the spatial probit and tobit models, we'll quickly give a general overview of the issue and then a number of approaches that have been suggested. Uh, the main issue is that the induced heteroscedasticity from an autoregressive process, a spatial autoregressive process, makes the standard probit maximum likelihood estimator inconsistent. So um, this is specific to spatial autocorrelation in that the spatial autoregressive process creates non-constant diagonal elements in the variance covariance matrix. Moreover, uh, these elements are not, um, don't have an analytical expression because they're actually uh, obtained by inverting this uh, complex matrix product of the two spatial filters of i minus lambda w prime i minus lambda w. So that in itself is not intractable. That's a nice analytical expression, but the inverse of it does not have an analytical expression. So we, we don't really know um, how to correct for this heteroscedasticity, as we've seen in, in a number of the uh, slides before, sometimes in the theoretical expression, one puts, one divides by sigma i to standardize the error term, but if you don't know what sigma i is, that really doesn't work very well. So heteroscedasticity is the main thing. Spatial autocorrelation primarily affects efficiency, but in the spatial lag model, as we saw in the simulations, it only also uh, creates uh, a bias. So there uh, basically in the literature have been five broad estimation strategies for the probit model and um, Tobit uh, is much, much less the case. Uh, so the first one is in a number of articles in the 1990s that uh, essentially ignore the autocorrelation part of the spatial autoregressive error term, but focus on the heteroscedasticity only. So these methods attempt to find an approximate expression for the uh, the variance of each um, error term and then use that to correct the error in the um, in the probability condition the probability that the error term has to be less than um, x i beta you divide both sides by sigma i um, or some approximation of sigma i the second um, approach is called expectation maximization or EM. This is a very famous estimation strategy um, developed initially by Rubin, uh, very much in uh, used in a Bayesian context, but it's also uh, totally applicable in classical statistics and is a paper by Macmillan that suggested this. Again, um, there's some issues with this and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then the th a third strategy is a generalized method of moments, which is perfectly general and can be applied to nonlinear models as well as linear models. And the uh, approach taken here in a number of papers and nicely reviewed in a, in a chapter by Fleming is uh, to consider GMM for the probit as a nonlinear model. And then there's a slightly different approach, which is a uh, actually an, an, a, another approximation, but it's uh, applied to the logit model. Now we, uh, I mentioned earlier that a spatial logit is is really something that has a very uh, tenuous interpretation, and it's not as natural as a probit because it doesn't have the normal distribution, and it's not. Uh, clear what this multivariate distribution is for the logit, but in any case, there is a bit of a literature on it, and Clear and Macmillan use an approximation of the uh, GMM conditions, a linear approximation around uh, the value of the parameter that is zero. So this method works um, somewhat 
uh, there is a recent a paper that evaluates a number of these methods and it works when there is weak spatial autocorrelation but it doesn't work well when the autocorrelation is strong. And then the two main methods are uh, maximum likelihood on the one side and the Bayesian estimation on the other. Uh, they both heavily rely on the likelihood function. For maximum likelihood in particular there's a um, simulated likelihood estimation method. It's called the Recursive Importance Sampler, RIS, Simulation Estimation, in a chapter by Baran and Viverberg. Um, and it's a really clever approach that works around the problem of the having to integrate out uh, the n minus 1 dimensions of the multivariate normal distribution by setting up um, a system where you recursively built up these um, distributions by sampling. And I'll discuss this in some detail, even though it's very technical, but it does work. And then uh, Bayesian estimation is uh, also based on a simulation estimator, a combination of a Gibbs sampler with Metropolis Hastings, and that was outlined in the work by Jim LeSage. Um, in the Bayesian lectures, I spent quite a bit of time explaining the difference between LeSage's approach, which uh, uses the uh, simultaneous autoregressive model, and then the approach taken in uh, most of the mainstream spatial statistical Bayesian literature, which uses a conditional autoregressive model. For, but for the purposes of this discussion, I won't get too much into the Bayesian just give you a sense of what's involved and, and, and how it's set up um, technically. So first let's um, look at the approach that only corrects for heteroscedasticity. So as I mentioned before, uh, in essence it becomes a, an adjustment of the probability condition. So the probability that I, y sub i equals 1 is the same equals the probability that the error term is less than x sub i prime beta. And so both sides of this inequality are scaled by sigma i. Of course, the problem is what is sigma i? Uh, as we've seen many times before, there is no way to estimate a separate um, variance term for each error, for each observation. That's just not possible. Uh, the way this is finessed is that, um, first of all, um, it's a probit model, so the variance is, the error variance is set to 1, and then we've seen that this um, results in a variance covariance matrix. That's the inverse of this matrix product, and uh, for certain um, simple uh, forms uh, of this structure, this autoregressive structure, the weights matrix in particular, um, the diagonal elements can be approximated. In particular, when the weights are block diagonal, meaning there's um, a, a hierarchy, say, of units within regions, and only the units within the same regions are neighbors of each other. We've called that earlier regime weights and also a particular form of a spatial expansion method. But in practice, these methods are not very useful because there are fairly crude approximations of the heteroscedasticity part, and they ignore the um, autocorrelation part. Also, in addition, typically, they don't have an asymptotic standard error. So for inference, you have to rely on, on other things, like a bootstrap, for example. Then the... EM method, um, I want to spend a little bit of time on this because it's a very powerful um, estimation paradigm, not so much in the context of the spatial probit where it's really incredibly slow in the first place, but also it doesn't have an asymptotic standard error. So again, you have to rely on bootstrap or something else to get the asymptotic standard errors. So. Basically, the estimation maximization approach is a general approach to deal with imputation in case uh, 
where you don't have actual observation. So latent variables are a special case of this. And uh, essentially, it works in two steps. One step is an expectation step, and a second step is a maximization step. In, in the case of the latent variable model, the expectation step is to construct a predicted value, in a sense, if you wish, um, for the latent variable given the observation of y sub i equal 1 or y sub y equal 0. So the key uh, factor in here is to work out the conditional expectation of the latent variable given the observed value. Uh, and um, in a general case, this is the uh, conditional expectation of the missing values given the observed value. So that's the expectation part. And then the maximization part is, uh, is used in a, a parameter estimation routine where the expected values, the imputed values, so to speak, are used as if they were observed. So in the spatial um, probit context, if we have a predicted values for the latent variable, then we can deal with these as if they were regular continuous dependent variable, and then we can apply the standard maximum likelihood for the lag or the error model using these imputed values from the expectation stage instead of the uh, actual observation. So then this maximization gives us a new value for the parameters, which we then use to um, get a new set of expected values for the latent variables, and so on. We continue this iteration until the process converges. The expectation step for the probit um, model uses a, a, a standard result in, in probit. There's nothing spatial to this, that the expected value, the conditional expectation of the uh, latent variable given an observed one is this linear regression part of standard predicted value plus an adjustment which is due to the trun truncation, the fact that you actually are cutting the di distribution in half only for the observed uh, y's and so that's the term at the end where you have sigma the density of the normal distribution divided by the cumulative distribution, the phi, the two phi's, and then for zero it's again same thing, the predicted value from the regression uh, minus an adjustment factor. So we have starting values for the parameters, we plug those into these uh, the density of the standard normal and the cumulative density for the standard normal, we get the predicted value from the regression, so for each observation we get a predicted latent variable from this expression. Then we stick this into the, um, the uh, maximization routine. We get new parameter values and, and we, we keep going. The, um, of course, in the spatial case, the predicted value is a little bit more uh, complicated, especially for the spatial lag model and uh, we have to deal with the head scholasticity. So again, um, in Macmillan's papers, this is finessed by some approximations. Um, instead of um, getting an analytical expression, you act, he actually takes the inverse of the um, I minus rho W matrix and then um, constructs a transformed X and a transformed sigma squared uh, using the elements for each row of this matrix. This is um, an approximation. It's very slow and there's no inference. So basically it's good to know about because it's a general paradigm and it's uh, actually a, a very neat way to deal with the fact that you don't observe these latent variables. But in practice it's, it's not very useful because it requires this inverse at each iteration and uh, for any large data set that's not going to be workable. And then the third um, general approach is the GMM, Generalized Methods of Moments approach, and, and this is just 
a standard application of nonlinear GMM. We get the moment conditions from the Coxnell generalized residual. If you remember, we, we saw that this, uh, in the treatment of the classic probit, the first order conditions um, boil down to something which is a, a weighted residual that has to be uh, orthogonal to the explanatory variables. So in the GMM, this becomes in general the weighted residual orthogonal to a matrix of instruments. Uh, if there is no endogeneity, of course, the instruments are simply the exogenous variables, the Xs, which is the case we discussed earlier. If there is endogeneity, as there is in the spatial lag case, then we need instruments in there. So then the H sub I contain both the ex ex exogenous variables, the Xis, as well as instruments for the spatial lag term. And then the GMM estimator is found as the um, standard solution to the moment equations, which is this expression uh, in argmin of the, as you remember, the expected value in the GMM is replaced by an average. So it's these averages of these moment equations weighted by a weighting matrix, and then uh, the complexity is to pick an optimal weighting matrix, which is equal to it, the inverse asymptotic variance. But in the papers that deal with the spatial issues, that is actually never uh, implemented that way. Um, the implementations in the spatial literature only dealt with the heteroscedastic aspect of the model, and in general, they um, don't perform that well. But it's an interesting uh, general principle again. So the, the three principles that have been discussed in the literature, and only one of them has uh, seen somewhat of an application and is also contained in some R uh, uh, library, is the EM. And the one that just the other two basically focus on the heteroscedastic aspect, so they ignore the spatial autocorrelation aspect. And in general, these methods do not have a, an asymptotic variance matrix. Um, the asymptotic variance is uh, computed rather ad hoc based on bootstrapping or something else. So next, we'll consider the maximum likelihood estimation in some greater detail.